Hi, this is Brock Palin, and this is RCE. You can find us online with all of our old shows and RSS feed and an iTunes link at rce-cast.com. Also, head on over to iTunes and give us a couple of reviews over there. It definitely helps out the show and lets other people know what we're doing here. Also, I have Jeff Squires, who is back from a one-time-ever hiatus, um, who is helping me out again. Jeff, thanks again for your time. Brock, yeah, let's let's just say I was... Um... Let's say I was on vacation in Barbados or something exciting like that. That that, that makes a better story. Uh, for this. But glad to be back. Um, and uh, this today, I think we have a pretty good, uh, pretty cool topic. It's a little departure from our normal HPC Linuxy kinds of stuff, but it's a very related topic. Kind of, kind of strays into the whole I/O field, and that is a big deal for all of us. So something we're talking about today. Yeah, we're moving into. I mean. What a lot of people talk about in our industry about big data, these guys definitely have big data, but it's a different kind of approach. So let me go ahead and introduce our guest today. Our guest today is Scott Long from Netflix, and we're going to be focusing on something new that Netflix is doing to try to make their service better. So Scott, might take a moment to introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, Brock. Thanks a lot. Um, and thank you, Jeff, also. So my name is Scott Long, and I work at Netflix. Um, Previously to Netflix, I've been there for about eight months, but previously I was at Yahoo for about five years working on their uh, operating system infrastructure. And prior to that, I've done uh, years, many years at places like Adaptech and uh, other storage companies that have been specializing in basically drivers, storage infrastructure, low-level stuff like that. Um, Outside of work, uh, I've been a very active member of the FreeBSD community for about uh, 12 or 13 years now. I was the release engineer for a number of years. Um, and prior to that, I actually attended the University, University of Michigan briefly in the early 90s. Um, and I now have a degree in uh, actually aviation science, of all things, but uh, I still do computers as my day job. So that's that's about it for, for me for background. Okay. Well, thank you. And, you know, being a U of M person myself, it was actually when you came out and gave this exact same bit of material to a number of students here and faculty at the University of Michigan and gave me ideas like, hey, this fits right into like what a lot of people who listen to our show would be interested about. Yeah, and I would have to that you're, you're in good company because uh, Brock, you're like a nuclear physicist or something. I studied nuclear engineering um, and yeah, I was looking for a summer job and started doing swapping CPUs in old burnout clusters and here I've been ever since. Yeah, I have a BA in English. Can you believe it? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I was actually an airline pilot for about six months last year but uh, gave it up. Oh, wow. All right, so we're coming from quite the diverse background but that brings different perspectives to computing. So this is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the actual thing we're talking about, um, Netflix kind of has is known for DVDs in the mail. Um, we're going to be focusing on the streaming service, which has been kind of a growing part of the business. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Netflix streaming and some of the challenges you guys have? So, yeah, um, as you said, you know, Netflix's original business was DVD by mail. And part of what made Netflix so good at that was understanding the data science of that, that it's not just about putting a DVD into the mail, it's also about knowing how many DVDs to inventory um, and and how to pre-stage those, those DVDs out throughout the country into distribution centers so they could quickly get to customers. <clears throat> and that was all very much, you know, data science and, and data analysis, and that's what they got very good at over time. Uh, about five years ago, uh, it was becoming very clear that the DVD business would not last forever, obviously, and that it was time to get into streaming, so they they took some of their data science knowledge and applied it into into streaming, um, licensing the same content that they were getting in physical media and hosting it in the same Amazon cloud services that they were using for their their uh, DVD sciences and getting out to customers. And um, it's been a growing thing ever since, uh, and it's been growing so much that we're actually starting to take some new directions with that and and. Instead of having everything be hosted in the Amazon uh, web services and distributed over the, the content delivery networks like Akamai and Level 3, and I, I'll talk more about those in a little bit, we're actually starting to take a lot of that in-house uh, in order to help ourselves grow more and, and optimize for, for better ser- service and better customer experience. 
so how much data are, are we talking about here? I mean, video is kind of, you know, the next generation internet. My company, I work for Cisco, has done big bets on video and has made a lot of predictions on how much video is and where it's driving the network and things like that. But how much data do you guys stream, say, per day, per month, something like that? Um, I actually can't give a good numerical value, but what I can tell you is that we – stream over 33% of the internet's peak traffic during peak times. So, um, so 33% of a ginormous number is basically what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to put that in, into, into a little bit of perspective, um, you know, the old saying was that, uh, you know, pornography actually is what, is what drove the adoption of many technologies over the years of VCRs and then DVDs and the internet and, dial up to to DSL, the cable, and all that kind of stuff. Um, movie streaming in terms of things like YouTube and Netflix and Hulu have actually eclipsed that original segment by a large factor now. And, and, and now, you know, the actual TV shows and movies that we're streaming is, is you know, makes up, uh, you know, when you, when you add all sorts of together, over 50% of the Internet, whereas uh, that pornography is now just a small fraction. So that gives you, gives you an idea of how much things have grown just in the last five years. And now services like Netflix, and Netflix especially, are really what's driving technology. So if I've got a device at home and I've got a Netflix streaming account, what exactly is the process of, you mentioned Amazon, web services in there, and so, you know, where do the bits, where does all the hardware and where does stuff come from? All right, so there's really two sources of what's going, of what is going on. First source is that when you bring up your, your client or your web browser to, to go to Netflix to choose a movie, that's going to go out to the Amazon Web Services, and those those services are, might be on the East Coast or on the web or on the West Coast or in some data center in between. But you'll go there and you'll pull down the selection of movies, and you'll be able to browse through and even see some clips, all that kind of stuff. That's all coming from Amazon. Um, but the next big step is when you actually go to play a movie, and and the first thing that happens there is um, when you when you select a movie, you go back to the Amazon Web Services to exchange some keys. Um, it's, you know, basically encryption key type of stuff. All right. So along those lines, uh, you talk about, well, wait a minute, actually, I'm sorry, Brock was IMing me in the middle. Did you say anything about your, uh, Amazon? Like you pick which Amazon center you end up coming from? Oh, so, uh, which center you come from is really based on your geography. Uh, you know, the, the, the big networks out there have a big database of, of everyone's ISP and approximately what geography, geographical location they're coming from. So, you know, based on DNS, based on IP address, that kind of stuff. So you, you get directed to, to the closest reasonable Amazon center for, for your geography. All right, interesting. So, so you're basing off locality. Do you also base off what kind of network they're coming in off of? So like mobile versus broadband and these kinds of things? And do you pre-stage different movie formats and resolutions and whatnot to match? So when it's just getting the movie started, no. But... So the next step for, for playing the movie, like I said, is, is, is you actually hit the play button, you exchange some keys with Amazon, and then Amazon sends you, your client, out a list of servers that it thinks you should contact in order to start getting the bits. And those, that list of servers is based on your geography. It might be based on your client. It might be based on what kind of network you're on, whether it's the cell network or, I, or DSL or cable modem. Uh, there's a lot of decision-making that goes into that. But in the end, you get a list of servers and basically a list of files because all, because all the streaming is is just uh, pulling down HTTP content. Um, so, yeah, so um, – and then you start streaming. Okay, and, and one of the big things that you're doing now and that we're specifically talking about today is that you're pushing down some of this content even lower, right? So you're not just doing everything in the Amazon cloud now. You're pushing it down uh, to the ISP level? Right. So there's a couple of reasons for that. First one was that, you know, while we had this great network of content delivery networks of, of third party networks that were they were delivering the content to the to the local regions, the ISPs were still complaining that they were getting killed by our traffic, that, you know, especially some of the smaller ISPs were were having a huge percentage of the traffic being Netflix and it was costing them a bundle to link up to the upstream where, where the uh, where the content was. So we started having this idea that Maybe it would make sense to to try and get uh, the data. Cool.